Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely from Twin Flame Body. How are you today? Today I want to talk to you about what's coming up ahead and how some things are going to start shifting and moving. And this is important because this has a lot to do with how you connect, how you actually get better, and yet it's going to seem like another series of ascension symptoms to, you know, that you start getting put through. Um, much is new for 2020. This has been a highly anticipated uh, evolution of self that a lot of people talk about, a lot of people have written about it. But the people who are able to actually feel their connections to love are actually the people who really will be doing it first. And there's a reason for that because you're actually able to get yourself up very easily. That's what love does. It doesn't require the same amount of effort as it requires someone who is not awakened to this to do this. However, as many people will point out to me and to each other and to themselves, you still live here. Yes, you do. You still live here. And are you still subject to the things that happen? Oh, yes. And there are things that need to be addressed that may not have been able to be addressed over the previous years. So for four years, you've been in a pattern of getting yourself onto a certain level of vibration so that it enables you to do this. Now it's going to come the next pieces of the puzzle, if you will, the next parts which actually do involve your other half. Now, if you've been focused in the direction of saying, well, I give up right now and I just really don't know about all this stuff, there is something that you need to know. Like it or not, you have a new body. I hope that you do like it because Liking the gift that you actually signed up for is going to make this so much more helpful for you and welcoming it makes it easier. Participating is a requisite. It's absolutely required that you participate. And that is the reason that a lot of people don't understand is because you are getting rid of interference and you actually can be the only one who is reaching into your body to do some things. Now, there are things that you also need to know because when this comes to some of your higher connections, there are people like myself who are actually already connected so that I can help. So I'm gonna talk specifically about the twin flame body and how it is and how it actually keeps you above a level where you could genuinely say the crap happens. And that's one of the things that throws people off. They say, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Are you able to distinguish? And for the most part, it can really throw you off because it threw me off. So I can just imagine how it throws, you know, other people off. It's not that, you know, one person is better than the other. That is another thing to know is that being able to avail yourself is absolutely the equalizing force in the entire universe that is going to take away a lot of the have and have nots. And to a degree, you see this in some ways. But getting rid of past things, past patterns, this winds up being a body thing. This is why your body real really will want to purge and let it go, which means full removal. There are things to know within this that have to remind you of love. And that's a very hard balance to do. How do you balance going through the things you go through and being romantic at the same time? So people who are dualistic will sit there and say, this isn't romantic at all. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. It's a mission. I'm doing this and they'll say they're doing it for everybody else except themselves. And I want to help you get a different perspective, a different view of this, a different feel of it, especially 
which is that as you do certain things, love rushes to you. Love already found you. So I have a, uh, one more thing to say. This does have a ripple effect on those around you and those who you love. First and foremost being the person that your heart is connected to. And this needs to be said. Some people are truly focused on the person who is wrong for them for various reasons. There are things to know about why would that be that I'm just not going to delve into here because it has a lot to do with ancient history. Your body doesn't want anything wrong in it anymore. Not wrong people, not wrong patterns, not wrong connections. You don't want anything wrong. So I'm going to show you a small presentation to let you know about this. Hi, so in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about why the root chakra moves and let you know that there are reasons, there are really solid, valid reasons why there's no putting things back together again the way that they once were. A lot of people find that uncomfortable, um, but this is different than pulling the rug out, which happened a few years ago for people. They sometimes felt like the entire rug was pulled out, things went off the rails, the wheels came off, however they described it, and there is still movement. And this is really going to confuse a lot of people unless they pay attention to what actually uh, needs to happen here. So the first thing I want to tell you is we think of we think of the masculine usually as just men, but it's also the masculine inside you. Females have masculine and so do men have feminine. But why the masculine has been holding you steady, even if you don't feel steady, even if you don't feel like you are um, having things go the way that you want them to, you're actually still not falling apart. And that's a big part of this is that if you're going to have lovers, you don't want lovers to have a nervous breakdown now, do you? No. Even if it feels like you're having a nervous breakdown. So there needs to have been time to get the full scope of this and to understand that you both have been working on your part in this overall ascension. But now for 2020, it is going to become very body focused. And that means for men too. So this is not just for females and it's not that females have to just suddenly say, well, I guess I'll just let anyone in. Please don't. Please hold steady. Please get busy on what you really need to get busy with. The next thing is you are releasing the universal strings of connection to the old paradigm. And how you do this is you help by focusing on you what disturbs you, what has ailed you, what runs in your family, where are you blocked or stuck, because you can only help unstuck each other, okay? And you may say, well, I have this, my twin hands that. It doesn't matter. Whatever stumbling blocks or, you know, uh, the speed bumps in the road, whatever has idled the engine, whatever has put you in neutral mode somehow, you need to get out of it because this is something that you'll have to do time and again, it, which is to get yourself unstuck, find and pay attention to yourself, okay? The days are going where your codependencies get you by. You can't be codependent in this union. It just doesn't fly, it doesn't work, it's, it continues to unravel. The other thing having to do with your root is this is where the inner child issues are and how to truly help each other and truly let go. Let go as in fully release the inner child, the ancestral child, 
histories, childhood issues, these are all starting from your roots. What could some of those be? Well, believe it or not, many males have been pressed into military service. They have been a part of work gangs. They've been slaves. They've been indentured servants. Sometimes they have not had a childhood. And that actually is a childhood issue because it brings up issues of abandonment. Now, you can't just satisfy this by simply saying, yep, my twin has abandonment issues. They went ahead and abandoned me, and there you go. There we are. No, it's incumbent on you to get that unstuck. Only you can get this unstuck because that's something that runs either in their family or yours or both. And those are your parts of your subtle body. So you can't just satisfy that with your mind and just say, oh, it'll go away if I, if I name it. That doesn't cut it. It actually takes several months to get these things out, to get out a sense of abandonment and self-talk, a sense of rejection. And this can be all kinds of other things. It could be unwanted pregnancies. Was your, child, was your twin an unwanted child? Are you an unwanted child? Yeah, those are childhood issues. There have been many, many children from history who have been unwanted. In fact, China has a big problem with that because they've made it very lopsided. More male children, not enough female children. You take that and you project it out 15 to 20 years later, and that's a problem. And it's becoming a problem. It's been a problem stewing and in the making. So these are, these are actually really valid things that have happened throughout history that you may or may not realize have an effect. That actually flavor how you or your twin flame relates to your life, your sense of self-esteem, all these types of things. So it's time for you to learn it. But again, what I'm going to say to you is love is the only thing in the universe that can remove it. And that doesn't mean, well, I accept them and I love them unconditionally. This means bringing in the higher love through your open channels. And that's where a lot of people have not focused yet. You haven't got your channels open, and I can tell you from having done it, I know the difference. I can tell you from having people give me feedback that it's a whole different level of the heart chakra opening. The next thing, I'm going to show you here why these things are important. So, you take the aspect of family, and we're talking about the root chakra. This is, includes the sacral and the hara, okay? This can include so many things, such as prostate cancer. Does that run in families? Yes, it does. This can include fertility issues. Yes, it does. This can include polycystic ovarian. Yes, it does. So it's time to realize by me saying this, not by me yelling at you, that the keys to healing are actually being brought to your attention, not to separate you, but to be addressed so that you can be properly together, you can be loving together, and these things don't create a block to you. So there's, there's three areas that I'm going to start off here to let you know. This is your ancestry. The root chakra has connected you to the old paradigm. And if you're still rooting yourself, you're going in the wrong direction. You're going to wind up feeling it as pain, discomfort, illness, and on and on. I don't like to see people do that or have that happen because... None of it will put it back together again. So this is the ancestry, the ancestral lineage, even unknown patrimony, okay? Does everyone know who their father is? There's a reason that matriarchal 
societies trace the lineage through the mom or the mother. It's because they knew who their mother was. Sometimes they didn't know who the father was. And there's still cultures that do that. They have to because they may not know. But here's where all of this is coming home to roost. It's showing up now. And it shows up in very odd and confusing ways. And I have the tools and the ways to help you release whatever that was. Some people know, some people don't. Diseases, like I said, diseases that run in family, dis-ease, discomfort, um, projected illnesses. Some people live that way. They will say, I know I'm always gonna have high cholesterol, it runs in my family. I know I'm always going to have this or that. It runs in my family. No, it doesn't. Not anymore. Because now is your opportunity to address this. Monetary issues. Okay. And we will uh, talk about that because that's what a lot of people also say. They're stuck. Their flow is stuck. Their mojo's stuck and who's sticking it, and they want to blame. And I say, no blame, no shame, no guilt. Let's get this moving. It's time to stop pointing fingers. It's time to stop blaming. And frankly, um, you know, men get a little bit of a, a bruising on this. Women do too, okay? It actually takes both people in the union to do things. And you can only prompt this really through your subtle bodies. The universal chakra is releasing, and this will be like a pressure, and that pressure causes anxiousness here. So where I'm showing you, right here, okay? And Right here in the root chakra, it can also affect this area here. You have a place to go. You need your connections to go to the new earth so that you can get there. What other things come into play with this or are considerations or are part of your roots? Okay. And I, I love this author, Alex Haley, who actually wrote a book called Roots a series of books, and it was a great story. It was a great fictionalized account of true events where he was able to build an entire epic around this. But it raises really great questions, and it showed and depicted a lot of the things and what has gone wrong. And that's just one segment of history. So you have history, you have traditions, you have childhoods. Who made you? Who have you procreated with? Was it a friend or a foe? What was that in past lives? What else? Addictions. Alcohol, sex, sexual addictions. And I'm talking about mild ones, not out of the ballpark weirdness or something that is very harmful because that's an entirely different kind of thing that needs addressing. That is not what I'm talking about, but it does also come from the root. Sex. What kind of sex do people have? What they like? Are they just having sex to glue something together? That's happened in history too. You want two kingdoms to get along with each other? Just marry the two children together, the prince and the princess. They pop out a baby. Oh, that's where all the allegiances lie. And this is where people sometimes will, will not understand the masculine. Where do their allegiances lie? How do you start to clear this out? What does it seem like an addiction, but it might be something else? Drugs, rituals, and certain foods to an extent. One of those could be caffeine, for example, which does affect both people. Alcohol affects both people. How many people have actually felt the hangover as the result of their twin drinking or felt the overindulgence that their twin has indulged themselves in as a result of not being able to feel each other? They're trying to feel, fill the hole 
and you're feeling the effects of it. And you don't want to feel those bad effects. You don't want to feel ill or sick. These things need to get away from here. And I know how to get it gone. And I mean gone, where it's gone for good and you feel actually new and you feel good, where your new normal is actually feeling good and you don't wait for the shoe to drop. Alcoholism runs in families. Drug use runs in families. Disappearing, escaping, that runs in families. It does. Let's talk about tradition again with your roots. What about arranged marriages versus marrying for love? This is being challenged every single day, and yet it makes people afraid. They don't want to disappoint family and friends. They don't want to disappoint the people who love them or have raised them. They want to be able to do the right thing. But isn't the right thing marrying for love now at this point? We've satisfied and satisfied and satisfied so many other people. How much of this people pleasing has to go in before you can actually come back to yourself? What about other aspects of tradition? What if a man does not have a dowry? Has he had a right to a wife? For many men, they've lived like this because they had to. They could buy a woman for a night, but they can't have a wife because they don't have whatever is sufficient dictated by that culture or that tradition. What about edicts and laws that say certain things about traditional ways that people have about marriage? What about common law marriage? What about hand fasting? What about religious marriage? Okay, there's, there's all kinds of things that need to sort of balance there. That's a whole jumble of stuff. What about becoming a widow? Are you supposed to give up your life and wear black? The neighborhood I grew up in, there was a fair amount of people who had come over from Greece, who had come over from Italy or Sicily or Naples. And if they had lost their husband, they were expected to wear black and not have a life of their own. They were relegated to taking care of the grandchildren or the nieces and the nephews or whatever. And how much anger and bitterness does this cause people that you can never have love again in your life, not romantic love? It's no wonder twin flames think that some of this isn't romantic. You've had to live without romance because someone else said so. So let's start to get real about this and start to get you back to you. What about wealth? Okay. Now this goes into people's roots as well. Some people, their family has squandered the money. Some people have set up the money and funnel it. It all depends. Some people ostracize their own children. Some people have not even two coins to rub together. Okay, so what about money? Family money, lack of money. Where does this sense of lack come from? Well, depression mentality, war mentality, things like that, that's a part of it. It's not only that, it's being completely kicked out of a land where maybe you had a farm. That's happened to several uh, national groups. I'm Irish, that's happened to the Irish. There was a potato famine. There was an occupation, you had to leave. You had to leave, otherwise you just wouldn't live. There was nothing to live on, you had to, okay? You can find that Irish diaspora in many places. You can find other types of diasporas that have happened. That's all a part of this. Inheritances, land, ancestral land, the common land of your ancestors. Borders have changed so many times. Do you know what you are? Most people can only go back a few generations. Some people can go back further, but does it really matter at this point? You and your twin are a universe unto yourself, or at least you need to start becoming that. And that's the way that you need to approach this. You need the approach of we're putting ourselves into one and creating our own universe, which gives us the stability, feeling safe, feeling stable, feeling loved. 
So please, be the miracle worker that you are. You're not leaving this up to your angels or your guides. You are your own angel. You're your own miracle worker. The high level of love has to funnel through your body. You are the one that is capable of bringing in the higher level into your crystal body as your body, become, whatever term you call it. I like to make this as simple as possible and not get hung up on terminology, okay? It has to come in through your higher channels, which are similar to like tubes or meridians where it can go through and it gets fed through your body. It nourishes you. It pulls you, magnetizes you, guides you, and keeps you nourished and alive and healthy and whole. The only reason that this flesh is alive is because that aliveness comes from somewhere. So you are the only one, well, both of you, who have the internal and external connection which needs to click together with one another. So please remember your why are we here it is to put yourself back as one. Now that might seem academic because a lot of people will say this, that, oh, hey, um, that's what I thought it was. I went and told that person, stop talking, stop the devices, start getting your body ready. 2020 is the prep time. And I just love this little picture here. If you don't believe in miracles, perhaps you've forgotten you are one. And to make some recommendations in here, I highly recommend that you participate. So have an energy session with me. I am a high level 12th dimensional source love twin flame who has unified all of my subtle bodies except this physical one. And that's coming up here. That means that am I physically together with my twin? No. I am a person who has dreamed my twin since the time I was a child who somehow, some way felt inside that I'm here for something, but it didn't unfold till years later. And not every coach is focused on this. I don't know what everyone focuses on, honestly, because I only find out when people come to me for help and I get them on track. But it is the only way that I have had to do my part in our journey between myself and my twin flame and high love. The energy session that's available in my spirit subtle body session is highly recommended because these connections are new. Everything's in a different place. So as I showed you in the depiction, there are things in places that you may not be gleaning from other, other sources. These connections are new. They're not old. They're not in the same places. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Join my ongoing classes where you can get true answers for you because I do talk to you one-on-one -on -one in the class as well. Many people have been sort of toted along by taking my ongoing webinars and classes, learning, and they've been doing very well. In fact, there's people that I would consider them to have graduated and there's people that have not lifted a finger. I know that. And they haven't known what to do. You don't know because there's all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have the best stuff going. I'm not saying that from arrogance. I'm saying that from what I've been able to achieve through my own guidance, my higher guidance, and what I've formatted and put together to make it as simple and as easy as possible. So also you could read my book starting with the first book called Twin Flame Body, Your Subtle Body Connections. 2020, oops. 2020 to 2024 is the time to up level. It's time for you to receive. You can't receive unless you are opened up for that. You also have to get the garbage out. Like I said, all those things I enumerated so join my live webinars. You have a session which will provide high-level energy healing plus great down-to-earth, easy-to-follow guidance that empowers both of you. Open your channels and find out how because only you can. All of the material that I present and that I've created is protected. It's my proprietary material. It's protected by 
um, full copyright. And you can check me out here. This is the cover of my book. Let me just come back here. So thanks for watching that. I want you to strongly consider this, okay? Please understand that you've had a decade of being able to get yourself out of karma completely. As a reminder, if you went back, because I remember prior to 2010, people were saying to me, what does the Mayan calendar mean? <laughs> the one thing I caught one day because I remember seeing it as a plaque on the wall, this Mayan calendar, and there was sticking out the tongue. Like, I was like, I looked at it one day and I was like, are you really thumbing your nose at us all? Is this some cosmic joke? And no, nobody is a cosmic joke or a universal joke. I think what that was saying was, don't make such a big deal about the end of the world. It's the end of an old paradigm. It's an ending and a new beginning. And there has been a 10 year grace period. Officially in 2010, which they were able to calculate it as, because people seriously thought the world was gonna end. And you know, this message has been coming like through several places. You go, you go to almost any downtown area, you see people with a placard, the world is coming to an end. Well, because they have not transcended that level, which lets them know what is ending. What actually is ending? And to begin with, it's all that stuff I just enumerated in my presentation. Don't you want a fresh start? Of course you do. That is the opportunity here. So let's, let's not have a skewed perspective of this. We're coming up to the end of the year. It's the end of the year. This is new. This is actually so new, it really threw me off because in 2017, I felt the next surge of how new this was and things moving into different places. And it put me on my toes right at a time where I thought, now I'm going to meet my twin. I had to say, but wait, there's more. There's more preparation so that we can properly be together. And yes, I am a person who is a prototyper. So I've accepted this task, the mantle of that years ago. I didn't always know it and I wasn't always opened up to it. There will be people that get asked questions that they don't have the answers to. A lot of people don't even understand and they, they've come to like, not really like these words, okay? But the first time I heard those two words, something in me, it was like a bell rang and went off. And it, I just, I didn't know, I didn't know that I had an answer because it felt like something had been answered, like, ah, there's the answer. And I hope that you are hearing some things that are like, ah, here's some answers and I need to embark on this because this is going to accelerate me into why I'm really here. You're not here to be frustrated. You're not here to be dropped on your butt. You're not crazy. If anything, the craziness is going away. And once again, I will say to you, it requires participation. This is no longer something passive. There's a reason for that too. And the main reason is accountability. If you make yourself responsible for each other and you take accountability for each other, that's love, okay? Love cares about the person you love. You don't just leave someone there drowning. You reach out a hand and you help. And this is what I do and this is what I've done. No matter how frustrated I've gotten or how painful or how many times I puked my guts out, I learned to roll up my sleeve and say, I'm doing something for us wherever you are. If someone called my twin a jerk or some other name because I could sense it, I didn't actually get a report, but I could sense it. I was like, oh my God, my twin is at work and someone is being mean. You better believe if I had known where they are, I would get in the car, go over there and get in those people's face. I couldn't. I couldn't make a scene. I couldn't afford that drama. 
I cannot afford to get in trouble. Why, why should I want to get in trouble? But you see these impulses, they come up in us. My impulse was not to ignore. My impulse was to help. And this is where sometimes the best help you can do is help yourself. And the only way I had was from within the envelopment of my higher heart energy. And that's how I learned to do this. No other way. Not by picking up the phone, not by the text, not by getting in the car, not by getting my baseball bat and ready to like, you know, go off. No, those things have been repeated throughout history. Furthermore, developing a heart line of communication, not telepathy where everybody else's mind is in there. Oh my God, I want to scream every time I see these like, you know, mind things. It's heart. The heart is the biggest thing ever because it is what will totally be your beacon of light. So it's time to cut out the crap. It's time to cut out the, you know, all of the things that, you know, just aren't working for you and come and learn the things because it's time to learn. Okay. You may have had a school before earth. Now you're in the school on earth. And I am one of, I am, as far as I can tell, I am the teacher. This is what people uh, relate to me. They say, Patricia, nobody has what you have. Nobody has the material you have. Nobody has the information or the ways you have to help move this. And I have helped people with some pretty heavy duty things and which at first was very daunting to me. I said to myself, oh gosh, you know, that's some heavy stuff, you know? But here's how it played out. It played out with compassion because what I saw was someone who wanted to get better. What I felt was someone who took, the, took up the invitation to come here and have a way to get rid of their garbage, a way to get rid of their baggage, not bring it back into their oneness, not carry everybody else's stuff with them or for them, and to be well and to be in love. And yeah, be romantic because this is one of the most highest, highly, deeply passionate things I've ever experienced ever. And it's not that I haven't been married before. It's not that I haven't had someone who has, I could have, genuinely call it make love. This is on a whole different level and it's deep and it's high and it is, it just keeps growing. <laughs> That's one of the most beautiful things is that there's no limits. Unconditional love means that you don't have to sit there and say, Hey, wait a minute. I have an allergy or Hey, wait a minute. I have a family issue. I was abandoned. Unconditional love says, okay, what are we going to do about this? Because now we want that gone. And I'm the person to come to, to help you with it. So check out the links below, check out the description. I hope to see you there. Join my class. The link is there. I have ongoing classes. I'm live here in Chicago. I meet with people in person and I will probably be coming to a city near you. I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you understand that you're on, you're on the thing that is just the newest thing under the sun. It's really the newest, you are the newest thing in the entire universe if you choose to be. Because next year, people aren't going to be talking about being a junior psychologist. They're gonna be ooing and eyeing over how they truly have gotten, as you could say, the heck out of 3D Earth, genuinely. And the stories that I expect to hear are going to be so welcome because even that's going to be new. So there's much more to come. And thank you as always for watching. Please subscribe. I do like when people subscribe. I really appreciate it. I do appreciate the feedback. I very much have been appreciative of being privileged to hear your love story, your coming home, 
helping you heal and all of the things that I've been doing for actually 10 years. It never gets old. Love never gets old. That part is always a refreshing thing. So thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing you. Bye.